Alright, this is a Browning Buckmark URX. It's made by uh, or imported by Umarex, it's the company behind it. It's basically um, it's an air pistol, it's basically a replica of a Browning Buckmark. And if you don't know what that is, that's basically um, it's a proper proper gun, firearm. Um, very well known, obviously not in the UK because we're not allowed to have firearms, but um, yeah, nice little gun. Anyway, what we're going to do today is we're going to strip it down. Take all the bits and um, do a little couple of little tune ups or just little minor improvements um, just so uh, just to show you um, how it comes apart and all the rest of it. Now, uh, there's a few little minor faults with this gun, not faults as such, but things that um, could be slightly improved um, upon uh, improved upon how it comes out of the box. So uh, we'll get started. All the tools you need is a screwdriver, a little screwdriver set. Uh, like this, um, I'll put links in the description. Um, if you want to buy some of these things, I'll put some links in the description to sort of help you out and uh, point you in the right direction. So uh, nothing special required. So uh, first off, um, we'll start. We'll start with a small Phillips. First thing we're going to do is take off this front side here. There's a Phillips screw in there. Comes out there, so there's one screw in the top there. Pull the front side off, uh, that's one bit out of the way. Okay, next thing, there's a pin, there's a pin on the barrel about there. So we'll just change the bit to one of these little uh, hex bits, just to use that as an improvised pin pusher. If it do not go out one way, just try it the other. That should come out fairly easily once that's released. Now you might have to just give it a gentle tap and out she comes. So once that's released, we'll push that through and that's just a captive pin. Let's go. Uh, I've little serrations on the end that hold in. Alright, once that's off, to cut the pin out. Back to the Phillips screwdriver. There's a screw on the top here. If you can see that there, we'll take that out. Now that's got double purpose, this particular screw, which I will show you. It actually holds in the, this little pin here that keeps the keeps it shut. Um, I don't know if you can see that, it just slots in there. That's the spring loaded pin, and there's a, there's a slot in the top. You can see that on that screw stops that popping out. Again, this is one of the little improvements you can do. That was totally dry, just a tiny, tiny bit of grease on that just to make it a bit easier. So, once the pin is out, we'll remove the rest of this screw. Quite a long screw because that has to go through and grip into that pin. So, if you keep all your screws together with your particular bits, you'll know, you'll know what's going on and where they come from. Right, once that's out, this barrel. Out of the barrel there slides off, and that reveals your that's your actual barrel, that's your actual barrel for the gun, and uh, obviously that's not locking now. Um, now one of the things with these guns is there's a, a bit of play on these bits here. Uh, you could try and put washers in, but there weren't enough space. So what I'll do a bit later, I'll show you the little trick I done with that. Okay, right, the barrel piece is off. Um, I guess really it's not 100% necessary to get it off if this, this barrel needs pulling out and sealing. So, uh, again, that's, that wasn't sealed in when that was taken apart. So, uh, okay, once you're to this stage, again, there's a pin here, just push that out and that holds that bit there so you can now move the barrel without a cogging and we might as well just push the other pin out and then we can take the whole barrel off. Now this this barrel there's a there's a little clip bit in the bottom there 
there so it holds it in place um, once this pin is in. But this barrel actually is just loosely in there. Um, and that's your that's where that seals for you put your pallet. Now what I done when I reassembled it, I put some clear nail varnish around this, this bit here, just a touch. So when it slid in, that actually sealed around that piece there. You can see the barrel piece now pushing in there. So I put a little bit of clear nail varnish around the edge, not so much that I couldn't take it apart again. And uh, what I've done with this barrel is uh, gave it a good clean inside. Um, I've actually got a um, ultrasonic cleaner, a little glasses cleaner thing. I used that and then I gave it a bit of a polish inside with a cotton bud and pushed it through using some peak, um, it's called peak, P-E-E-K, metal cleaner. And again I'll give you the link to that so uh, to help you out, save you searching around too hard. Right, that's all apart. Now we get to uh, the insides of the gun and on the top here there's two Allen keys, one there and one there. Now the back one goes all the way through and holds this bottom piece of the gun onto the top piece. So we'll just grab an Allen key. Okay, so we've got our Allen key. This is, might be the only extra bit you might need. I don't think there's a one big enough in the kit that I've got, so uh, hopefully in the link to the screwdriver kits I'll have a big enough one in there so you can go by one one lot of tools. Right, so two Allen keys, front and back. So it's a lot longer this one, so uh, you can't get them mixed up because the short one won't grip on anything. Uh, the reason being is, like I said, that goes all the way through and holds on to the bottom part of the gun. Uh, so what we'll do now, we'll just take the grip off, fill up screw there in the grip. And this grip, what it does, it sort of wraps, wraps around. So what you got to try and do. Get a hold of it somewhere uh, from the back. So if you get all them little lugs, little lug bit there near the top, and there's there's little pins in it which fit into the hand grip. So that literally just pulls off. You see these little dents here? They they're what actually grip into this bit to, to hold it on. So once that's off, you can see the handle's all hollow. Uh, what I've seen some people do with these is. Um, because the gun is actually quite light and I've seen people put nuts and nuts from nuts and bolts and little packers and things in there just to give the gun a bit more weight. Uh, didn't do it myself, um, I might do it at some point. So um, anyway, now two more little Phillips screws at the front here. They're very, very little short stubby screws, one each side. And this top bit should just lift off and now what you'll notice is this sort of fell out and one side fell off. Don't worry that is how it should be and um, that's your um, bit that pushes up and catches you, pushes the piston back basically. And again um, this didn't have much grease or nothing on it so um, just put a little grease on when I put it back together, but I'll show you all that as a goes back together anyway. Right, so that's your trigger assembly. Now, I didn't take mine apart any further than this, and what I've seen is one modification is to polish this top bit here because the trigger can be a bit stiff on this particular gun. Um, but what I've, what I've done is actually um, in here, if you can see the little trigger mechanism in there. I just put a little bit of molybellinium grease on that. Again I'll tell you all of what that is about in a minute. Um, I really didn't mess with it um, because I didn't want to trigger accidentally going off and stuff but when I put this back together now I probably will just give that a bit of a polish. Um, go very, if you're going to do that just go very gentle with it and um, you should be okay. That's the safety which is actually moves quite freely when the gun is not cocked or when the gun is cocked it's actually quite stiff. 
again, I didn't, I didn't, I just gave it a bit of grease to free it up a little bit. But I think in time that probably will free up. And again, I didn't want the safety coming off too easy. So, um, so if you want to um, strip this down further, um, can't help you with that. I think it's just a pin, a couple of pins that push out. I didn't really see any need uh, to take that apart anymore. So this is uh, where all the action happens. Um, this bit here, you can see your spring in there um, as that comes back, hooks on the on the, um, the trigger mechanism. And uh, this, if you once you get this apart, you'll see the actual cylinder is actually really rather short. And um, anyway, what we'll do now, we'll uh, we'll disassemble this so we can get the piston and the spring out. Okay, one Phillips screw there. Keep that to one side so we don't mix that up with any other screws. Right now, there is a little tiny screw in the top there. Um, well, it's not a screw, it's actually a little tiny Allen key. Now, in my little screwdriver kit, if I can find it, yeah, it just about fits in there. That's the smallest. That might even be, yeah, that is that's the smallest little Allen key bit in my kit. So, what we'll do now, this bit on the back here, you can see there's a little semicircle. That's actually that's actually going to spring out when you undo this Allen key. So, what you got to do, and what I'd suggest, is pressing it down on the table to take the tension off it while you take this little tiny Allen key out. And if you don't, you might strip the thread and that'll be hard to get out. And then be prepared for this to pop up like so. Okay, you can see a little, don't lose that. I did actually drop mine and miraculously managed to find it. So, once that's out, this can spring back. And you've got your spring retainer in the back there. Again, there were some issues with this uh, when I took it apart. As I took this apart initially, as this came out, this all twisted. So I gathered that the spring was catching. And it was, it was catching inside the ring in here so I put a little washer in there so the end of the spring didn't grip into it and the same thing was happening the other end um, it was actually catching inside the piston so now if you slide this this bit out inside um, if you can't get it just get a little screw don't touch that bit there with a the screwdriver that's your seal and then your piston slides out and that's about it really um, now in the end here, deep inside this spring, as I felt it was catching, so I figured that if the spring was twisting, um, it wouldn't really function as well as it should. Now, again, I put a small amount of mobilenium grease on there. That's like a thick black grease. Um, you only need a really tiny amount of it. Um, anything with metal to metal contact, um, you can use that grease. And like I say, this was actually sticking. So as it compressed and turned a bit, that was catching, so I figured that would probably work better if I didn't. So I put a little washer in the bottom there. Don't make it too, th too thick a washer, if not you'll, you'll pre-compress your spring too much. Now this is actually quite messy now because I've greased it all up, but when I first took it apart, this spring had one little dab of grease that was like this white stuff just stuck and gone hard and wasn't actually doing anything, so I think have all the things you can do to, to make this gun more reliable and last longer is to free that spring up from uh, sticking inside here and um, I think you'll probably find that perform better. Now what I've done, um, again, I, I shined, gave this a polish up and where the casting is, I don't know if you can see there, I don't know if the light is good enough, is there was a little ridge there and the same the other side, so um, what I've done I got a nail board, stole it off my wife, and just gently filed that down. I obviously took this off. It just pulls off, that's your, that's your seal. Obviously don't sand it with your seal on. Uh, that just snaps over that end bit. There's a bit of oil on, on there. Uh, that just snaps over that cap there. So we'll take that off if you're gonna do the same thing I done. Again, I don't know if that'll make any difference, but um, done the same the other end just so it didn't scratch inside the ball or inside the piston rather 
Okay, that was that. Another thing I've done is inside here, you can see the hole where the air shoots through. Now inside there, there was some sort of black gunk which should uh, come off the, obviously off the rubber seal from probably from when that was new. And uh, so again, what I've done, uh, I wrapped up a big kitchen roll, not the cheap kitchen roll that just come apart. Get it like a fairly good kitchen roll wrapped up into like a tube. Shoved it down there. I'll just show you with this little bit of rag here. So uh, just wrapped it up like so. I put a little bit of the pig metal polish on there. Uh, I put it down there and kept twisting it and twisting it, pulling it out, give it a clean. I don't know again if that make any difference, but I thought, well, if that's nice and polished. And the hole in the bottom there. Now, I've done some research in the air guns and springs and air holes and all the rest of it, and apparently there's a there's been a lot of research done, and the size of the hole in there is an optimum, which is about 3 mil, I think. And I looked at the hole and I thought, well, that is about that anyway, so I wouldn't suggest anyone messing about with that. Some of these chambers here, some are tapered and some have got a, um, like a recessed entry. I wouldn't recommend messing about with that at all. Um, leave it as it is, give you, give you a cylinder a little polish so you can see how short how short the stroke is on the cylinder just literally uh, whew, inch and a half maybe so that's that uh, on reassembly um, again I've done some research looked into the best um, thing to actually put on this rubber and it was recommended that silicone grease for leather uh, washers and uh, they call it a synthetic oil, any sort of synthetic oil for the for this one. So I mean, I just used some sort of car oil. Uh, whether that's right or not, I don't know. Seems to function fine. Um, again, very tiny amount. I probably quite didn't put enough on there because I didn't want the gun diesel and all smoke coming out the barrel and stuff. So uh, that's about it, guys. Um, putting it back together is. Um, Exact reverse of taking it apart. Like I say, clean all your bits up. Um, a washer in the bottom of there would help to stop this, uh, so this spring doesn't 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 grip on it. So to test that, just make sure that turns freely. Um, make sure the spring turns freely in there. Give this spring um, a wipe of mobile and grease all the way around. Best thing is rubber gloves. Put a little bit on your hands and just just smear it around. Now the grease I used is this stuff. Now I used to fix cars and things, so I just happened to have this lying about in my shed. I've had it there for years. Um, if you know a car mechanic, he might have a little sachet for you. Uh, if not, I'll put a link uh, to where you can get it. Uh, a tub like this would last a gunsmith a lifetime. You really only need a tiny amount, so um, that's my lifetime supply and. Uh, Seems to have done the trick. So um, that's the disassembly. Um, I will show it going back together. Uh, I'll just show you the couple of little things I've done, um, which I think may have improved it slightly, and uh, we'll take it from there. So we'll put this back together now. Uh, I'll try and do it in the same order it came apart. Now, first of all, before we do that, uh, what I've got here, this is uh, clear nail varnish. It's just cheap stuff, come out of a pound shop. Um, and when you cock these guns, the barrel sort of hang there, it feels a bit loose and wiggly. And uh, I tried to find some washers to go on either side of there, but the gap is actually quite small and I couldn't I couldn't find any. So now this this is obviously not a permanent um, solution. Um, this little trick I used to do of action figures when the limbs came loose is uh, give them some clear nail varnish on the limb, just move it around, leave it to dry crack the seal and uh, they, that tightens the joints up so I figured the same sort of thing might work on this so what I've done I gave it a few coats again this isn't going to last forever and it's going to wear off but I just did make it feel a bit tighter and made it feel a bit better when I was cocked and make it feel like the barrel was going to fall off so uh, obviously you've got to clean get any grease and stuff off of there first give it a few coats leave it to dry and that should tighten up a bit if it don't, just keep putting coats on until it does. So it's not going to last that long. And another thing, 
I done with it just before I put the barrel bag in. Don't get any of this varnish on the end there. Just just round the bottom half of this bit here. Touch the nail varnish. Push the barrel straight in. And that should give you a nice seal. Um, so right here we go. First thing first, we need to get the piston bag in. Once you if you want to clean that up, it's up to you. Um, you don't even have to take this off if you don't want to. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my synthetic synthetic oil. I'll show you what it is. Um, Gastrol Magnatech. Again, this was off uh, some air, air gun academy place. I said that synthetic oil is better than grease. I don't know. I could be wrong. So what we'll do, we'll just put a little bit of oil. I didn't really put hardly any on when I put it back together last time, so I am going to put a bit more. And I shouldn't worry too much because that will, your gun might smoke a bit until all the oil is blasted off. That's, uh, that's that, just a little touch. And just gently when you slide that in, make sure there's no dirt and stuff in this first part of the cylinder because a lot doesn't actually plunge in there that will go through as you're putting the bag in and that should just slide in there yeah make sure I move really now again when I put it back together last time I didn't put any grease on the little side rails here to help that slide so I am going to do that There's way too much on there so we'll just put So you don't want to really get any on that piece because that's where your, your trigger mechanism works and you know, so you don't want the trigger going off by mistake. So we'll leave that in there. Okay, next thing. Okay, so you get your plunger bag in. I, I say that now, varnish and beer, I've done that now. It dries pretty quick so I'm just going to put it back together if I was dry or not, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so you got your spring which put your grease on. Now I think I've got enough on there already as you can see you can't really see it all dripping off and you don't really want it that way. Um, I put a little bit on the spring guide there. Make sure that turns freely. Um, the same with the other end. Um, make sure it's not catching. And we'll slide that in now. Now again I suggest you have your screw and everything ready. So, get your grub screw ready, make sure this bit is the right way around, the slope follows the contour of the gun, and it's quite hard, it's not, it's not terrible, if you can't do it yourself, I'd say perhaps get a friend to help you, and while you're putting tension on it, screw in, that's held in, and the screw in the bottom that holds that piece as well so you may have to put a little bit of pressure on it to get this screw in but we'll just give this a try, uh, that one there, no it didn't need no tension on it, right get that, get that one fairly tight, not so tight you're going to strip the threads and that's your piston assembly back together. Um, now. This bit that fell out when I took it to bits. Don't worry, like I say, this side bit coming off was meant to. If you, can't, if you couldn't remember how it went back together, that's how it goes. These two bits face upwards as it goes in here, and as it slides up, this bit catches on the auto safety and pushes that and pushes that on. So as, as you can see in there, as this slides up. Makes your safety go on. So that goes in there. Now, when you put the top bit on, these two bits sticking up have got to go behind that piece there. So just get that in the right position, snap it on, and you should, this bit, you should feel the tension. You won't be able to push that with your hand because the lever obviously has too much tension on it. So I'll just uh, show you that bit again. 
these two torque rods in there. Again, you want a little bit of grease on the bottom of these rails and on the top. Again, just a smidgen, a smidgen rather. And those two bits have got to go basically in that, basically in that gap there with these two. So line that up and snap it on and you should, you should, you should feel the tension against there. Okay, you got your cylinder back on. Uh, so what we'll do now, we'll put the two little screws in there. And this top rail has got to go on. Again, nice little feature on this gun, having the, having the rail already there. A lot of guns, uh, you have to buy them as extras. Right, don't forget, long screw in the back. Or the Allen key, Allen hex head key, whatever. Uh, the one in the front. We'll just get them wired most of the way in. Tighten them evenly so we'll get them both just until it starts to grip. And then once tighten them up fairly tight. Okay, so the uh, nail varnish is nearly drying up here, so while we're waiting for that couple of secs, um, what we'll do. Seal the barrel in the barrel holder. Just a touch. Oh, there. What I didn't show you on this piece is that all we can just push us in there. I didn't bother taking out again. Um, so if you want to replace it, that looks like a fairly easy replacement. You can do without taking the gun apart or anything. So that is pushed in there. As far as it'll go, I'll just leave that a second. Right, next step is to put one of the pins back in this base here. Oh, don't push in one way, just turn the gun over. Try it the other way, I think they only push in from one way here. Just use the bottom of your screwdriver. Push that home, just flush. So that's your barrel, your barrel hinge bag on, and as you can see, well, you, you probably can't, but that feels a lot tighter now. So when they're cocked, these sort of wiggle side to side, and that feels a lot tighter now and better. So we've got that bag on. Don't worry about if any of the varnish go on the inside of there, that'll just uh, do the same purpose. Now we'll get your lever. Leave a pin back in. Okay, let's turn that over. I think they must be slightly tight with these holes because they tend to only go in one way, so that's too far. Okay, get that in flush so we're in there. Again, make sure your barrel is pushed right in. That plastic bit on the bottom there with the grooves you saw on the barrel on the outside, they sort of hold that in place. What we'll do next is get that barrel shroud on so we can get that screw in there to hold that pin in. So we'll just slide that over, get your little pin and remember the long screw which the long screw which has to go all the way through. Uh, again, just a touch of grease on the bottom of that pin there, a tiny bit on the side, you'd say you don't want that getting on the end pin or that all probably not hold it tight enough. So you don't have to fully cock the gun, just hold it sort of half cocked. Make sure your slot lines up at the top there with a screw hole. Then you're gonna have to push that in a bit with your finger, get the gun to lock, and then we can get that screw in. Now on a scale of one to ten where ten is hard and one is easy, I'll give this gun a two for how easy it is to get the bits and back together again. Um, it's a great little gun. I wish I had a chronograph to test whether the 
um, the treatment I'd done to the barrel there made any difference whatsoever, but um, I guess we'll never know. Okay, one nice pin to go in, that's the long pin that goes through the, the barrel shroud. And there's a little serrated edge on one side, so don't make a mistake I did a little while ago. I couldn't get it in because I didn't realise the little serrated bit I'd put in first. So, into your screwdriver. Try and get that to line up. Just give that a little. So that pins in. Um, one last piece. That's your. And that's on. One screw in there. Okay. Last thing is to put your grip piece back on. And as I say, if you noticed, um, there's really no need to take this off. Um, no, there ain't no need whatsoever. Um, all that will come apart with this on. I just took it off so you could uh, see what was underneath it. Uh, getting this on. A little bit tricky. Get it lined up where that should go. And then make sure that's all sitting flush. Two screws. So that's it, pretty straightforward. I say on an easiness level, one to ten, with one being easy, ten hard. I'll give it a two. Um, just need some basic tools. Um, right, I'm just now going to make sure the cocks, the pin is locked in. And I say I've revarnished that bit, and that feels so much better. So I'm not going to dry fire it, just so uh, that can damage your your washer. You shouldn't dry fire any air guns, really. I think PCPs possibly might be alright. Just shoot that in my bin. Yeah, works a treat. So there you have it guys. I say whether shining that piston barrel uh, and getting the cake out and stuff made any difference. I'm, I'm twisting the spring, stop the spring twisting again. I don't know if it's made any difference whatsoever. Um, I do intend to get crony at some point so we can test things like that but uh, there you have it guys if you've got any questions anything I missed just leave a message in the comments and uh, that's it the Umarex Brian Buckmark can highly recommend it nice little gun um, I've got this little uh, red dot sight which is a nice little one fits on there a treat we zeroed this up yesterday and uh, that's pretty good uh, the inbuilt sights are actually pretty good you just you just need to set them up and um, yeah, I'm very pleased with it. Nice gun, good price, well made. Uh, a few little tweaks you can do uh, just to make it a tiny little bit better. And uh, there we have it.